Hey guys, Ariana Grande with a large grilled stuffed burrito here with another magic tutorial for all of you that enjoy seeing and learning card tricks. Oh boy, this trick requires something that most magicians fail to use after consuming a calorie heavy meal. Toothpicks. To toothpicks. You guys should use them more often. But now you could use them in a clever card trick that involves having some toothpicks around the general vicinity. Perfect for when you take your cards out in public places because you take them with you. So without any further interruptions, let's get right into the grumption. I will need to show you this card trick. Oh, by the way, you could totally still win this deck signed by the original creator of the deck from Got Magic by looking in the description below and seeing how you too could win a deck of Jazz Stripes signed playing cards. Oh boy, I'm so excited. Check in the description below. But spoiler, you got to follow me here on Instagram and you got to follow United Magicians Emporium on Instagram. And that's that's pretty much it. That's that's what you have to do. So yeah, go ahead and do that. Look at the description below for more information. Oh, hey, hey there. So you like card tricks and you also have some toothpicks laying around. Well, luckily for you, you could do this crazy, easy to do card trick. So for this, we have a deck of playing cards that could be mixed and shuffled. And uh, you need to find a spectator who is desperate and lonely enough to see a, a card trick. So once you find that lonely poor soul, you have them select a card, which truly could be any card, and they remember it with the intention that you are gonna find the card uh, later. Uh, you know, card tricks are pointless, really, if you think about it for more than two seconds. No, really, let's, let's break this down here. So as humans, we find value in something, picking something, and then that thing being found again. The only value in this is that it serves as a temporary distraction from death and our inevitable demise and that the odds are against it. You pick one object out of 52 objects and the conclusion is almost always the same with the first object being produced again. So the spectator remembers the card. In this case, it's the queen of spades and this card is lost somewhere in the middle of the deck. If the spectator wants at this point, they could even cut cut the cards. So here's where the patter portion of the trick comes into play because we tell the spectator that even though we're the world's greatest magician, even though we have spent hours upon hours dedicated to learning, harnessing, and practicing this awful craft, it turns out that we have limitations. And believe it or not, toothpicks have no limits. They could go anywhere that we can't. So I want you to think of your card, sir, and try to project it inside of the toothpicks. Just bear with me for a moment as we cut into the patented pig cake crotch cam. Oh boy, how's that for continuity? Your boy's becoming a filmmaker. So here, I'm gonna try to use my psychic intuition to pull out the cards that I think may have been your cards, sir. Uh, I'm definitely getting some good vibes here on this King of Hearts. Uh, I feel some definite affinity towards this Four of Diamonds. Oh boy, this Queen of Spades surely feels good. This uh, Jack of Hearts also feels like a small tree monkey brushing my back. And uh, we'll, we'll go with the Three of Spades, sir. Is your card among these? Of course, the spectator is going to respond, yes, yes, my card is among them. You accident, you adopted accident. And I go, hey, that's personal, but factual. So here, you see the limitation of my abilities as a magician, whereas I can't pinpoint the actual card you picked, sir. I can only limit my selections to five possible outcomes. But here's where the toothpicks come into play because we have trained the toothpicks in a way 
that are better than a magician. So we're gonna have to see the what the toothpicks feel about each and every single card here. So let's let's see if if we just hold it over the three of spades. Ah, nothing, nothing. It feels nothing like a, a magician with a meaningful relationship. Let's see the jack of hearts. No, the toothpicks don't feel anything, much like what society feels for cardisters. Uh, let's see the queen of spades. Oh boy, a definite connection has been found on the queen of spades, uh, thus proving that toothpicks are in fact more intelligent than human beings. Toothpick tricks? That's lame. If you want some real magic, some real card magic, you should totally check out the Pick Cake Card Academy. Man getting rave reviews all around. People saying, hey, how did I ever learn card magic without the Pig K Card Academy? Almost takes your breath away. So go ahead and check, check it out in the description below how you too could become a member of the Academy. For this trick, you're gonna need uh, toothpicks, uh, not to downplay the necessity, but we're actually gonna take advantage of a very, very old method in the sort of bar bet scene here where the toothpicks apparently appear to be induced or conduced by static energy so it's a very very simple thing to do what you got to do is you got to take one toothpick and you balance it on your hand so we have the edge sticking out you, you see that little bit right there we have just the tip just the tip sticking out usually the tip is all i need and then you are going to hold the other one in your right hand however notice the position of my nail the toothpick is inside my nail right now so i'm just putting my nail inside of the toothpick and when i want to do the action all i have to do is just flick that's it that's all i have to do so once the toothpick is in this position all you have to do is hover the toothpick over the appropriate card and flick it when it comes to the cut. You see how easy this is? You see how easy? So before we jump ahead of ourselves, let's go to actually figuring out how the spectator picked that particular card in the deck. Have I mentioned that you could totally win a deck of signed Jazz Stripes decks from the creator by just looking at, I think I already, so we're using the key card principle here. The key card principle, very underrated, very overlooked for its more difficult counterparts, but we're going to use the key card principle here to have the spectator pick a card and us be able to determine which card they picked. So they touch any card they want. In this case, it's the queen of spades yet again. Can't avoid that. Why can't finding women be that easy in real life? But cleverly, as a spectator, is looking at their card, in this case, the Queen of Spades. We have taken notes of what the bottom card of the deck is. That's gonna be our key card. So now, when we cut the deck, you notice that we're careful to place our key card directly above the Queen of Spades. So now, if we spread the deck and look for our key card, we're gonna know that the card immediately to the right of it is the Queen of Spades. You see how Magic works here, folks. It's a really, really long and tested art form. But that's our key card, and that's how we determine what card the spectator picked. So the spectator picks a card, Queen of Spades. We drop our key card on top. They could cut the deck as many times as possible. Here's something people tend to ask me that don't have brains. What happens if they cut between the key card and the card they picked? So let's, let's recreate that scenario right now. Here we have the uh, Queen of Spades. If uh, I didn't magically make it disappear from the deck, <laughs> there it is. Uh, so let's say the spectators happen to cut the deck and they cut the uh, three, of, three of to the bottom. Well, we know that because this was the original bottom card, the Queen of Spades has to be on top. You, you see what that is? You see how that works? Um, so it doesn't matter if they cut the, the three to the bottom, that just tells us the queen is on top because it's, it's the next card in the cycle. I really wish that I had, didn't need to explain that. What happens if the queen of spades is on the bottom? Well, you would know that that's their card because the next card you would spread is the key card. You know, some things really, uh, use common sense, common sense, like deodorant magicians should use deodorant. 
Anyways, once you've determined the identity of the card, you are going to take out some cards that are not their card. So here I take out the eight of clubs. Next, I go for another card, in this case, nine of hearts. Now I'm looking for their card. So I spot my key card. In this case, it's the three of clubs. And I out jog the card next to it, which is the, the queen of spades. That's right. The last two, if you haven't figured that out by now, don't matter. So now you arrange these cards in a row on the table and the magic could begin. You're going to take out your magic toothpicks and tell the spectator that because of your limitations as a human, you could only take that effect so far. So the toothpicks have been trained to, to narrow in on the card. So here, all you got to do is hover the toothpicks, get into the position we discussed. And when we get to the first card, you just tap the toothpicks. No connection has been made. You hover over the second card. It's the same thing. But when it comes to the third card, the moment the toothpicks come in contact, you're going to flick. You see that? That's the only move there. Because when you do this and you touch the tip of the other toothpick, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get sent flying without any sort of reason why. Let's do that one more time. Oh, it's almost like the toothpick magically appeared in my hand. So one more time, you're just going to flick it as you touch tips which is good advice for those of you youngsters. And now once you touch them, you're going to see that this toothpick goes flying out and they've elicited a response over the correct card, which in this case is the third one and the queen of spades. Oh boy, man. Now you could use this toothpick and take out the Dorito crust from between your teeth. So that's a trick. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys do all the things that people do when it comes to videos. And I also hope that you guys uh, take some lessons. Take some lessons in the academy. Go ahead. Check it out. Over 60 videos. Really helps out. I have to sponsor myself here, guys. This operation can't just run itself. You got you to gotta take action. And where no sponsor comes in, you got to be like, hey, guess what? I'm sponsoring myself. So if you guys have stuck around to this part of the video, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of advice. When it's raining and it's sunny, you still have a chance of getting wet because water tends to be wet. So I'm going to go figure out different ways to use an umbrella to bisect a frog.